I essentially dropped out after a few years because I always wanted to start my own business. I just kind of didn't know how until an opportunity presented itself back home, you know, and I quit college that way. But that's not normal. You know, I can't recommend people go that route or that that's, you know, in any way representative of the majority. But yeah, college is good if you're going to be a professional in something, if you're going to do engineering, if you're going to do your doctorate or going to do something like that STEM field, it's mostly STEM, dude, and you'll be fine. But you do some bullshit like gender studies or even some of the more there are STEM fields that are still very hard and not worth like biology. There's a lot of kids that even when I was in college, uh, biology majors were struggling hard. Everybody and their mama wanted to do something like biology and there were no jobs for biology majors and then they tried to specialize into some subgroup of biology and that was already hard to get into and it required even more you know science and math classes and that still didn't guarantee you your job coming out of school it's a mess not even stem is safe unless you do certain types of stem like i think there's mechanical engineers now that are struggling because it's just the amount of people that pick mechanical engineering there's not a lot of demand at least that's what i've heard through the grapevine but other specialties will always be there now the computer science majors are fucked with the advent of ai like all the code monkeys are done for. But welcome in, everybody else. Feel free to jump in if you have questions, talk, say something, introduce yourself. A bit of an open forum here for Mondays. Well, I'll jump in and introduce myself. <clears throat> Trying out. Yeah, basically, uh, my, my main situation here is, well, I'm 56. I uh, I moved back to the United States after living abroad 20 years. Wow. Uh, got three passports. Uh, anyway, that was a great adventure and love having those extra passports. You never know when those are going to come in handy. Mm -hmm. um, but um didn't make that much money over there. Came back to the United States to spend more time with mom. Okay. And I came back to the U.S. to restart a pilot career. So I just uh, was part of a, a cadet program. Uh, decided that that with my options and and just the industry changed a little bit. And so there's a lack of pilot. Now we're going through a little bit of a downslide again. So I just reached my minimums for the airlines. And there's a little bit of a slump due to the, some of the Boeing problems and things. But anyway, going to have to wait a little while for that uh, first job. But um, but in the meantime, applying, um, you know, doing some other things and side hustles, um, music therapy. I got a master's in music therapy. I like, like working with older adults, you know, not much money in there, but uh, it's rewarding. And I, 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 li I like being a musician and drummer mainly, um, but really <laughs> focusing on my pilot stuff uh, in, in trying to interview view and things after living in spain i speak spanish would love Excellent. to live and work in latin america uh yeah as a pilot as you guys probably know you get the time on and off so i plan in uh i'm, I'm trying to get a job in puerto rico as i said the interviews have dried up a little bit for the moment that'll change eventually but um i'm, I'm actually going to go to puerto rico in a couple weeks here so if hey. anybody knows anybody out there <laughs> let me know um but just can explore i mean i'm sure i'll be and you know, if i get this job i'm hoping to get for this little uh commute this uh little airline based in uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um called Silver Airways. They may they mainly fly around the Caribbean, but is the first officer, you don't know, have seniority. So I'd be based in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We've never been there, but I'm gonna go scout it out and try to network. You know, that's the name of the game these days, yeah, specialist yeah. thing. Um as jobs of my level is dried up a little bit. Still if you're a baller a captain, got a lot of hours, you know, you're still wanted, but you know, things have dried up a little bit for people of my sort of beginning level. Yeah. But um, networking is the name of the game and getting to know people. So anyway, looking forward to that trip to uh, Puerto Rico through this cadet program. Um, I did Amazing. through Mesa Airlines, but now they don't need me, but they still gave me the, the airline benefits. So I'm going to take advantage of those. Yeah. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's uh, my situation, <laughs> guys. And uh, good to be here. Uh, got, glad to have you, man. Living is a completely different experience than passing through and the way people treat you. And when they find out you're actually basically a local now, it's uh, the energy is completely different different yeah um yep. there's plenty of guys that pass through even here in bucharest that they're here for like a month or so and and they're complaining because i meet them and they're like oh my god i've seen you from youtube and uh let's grab a coffee whatever okay fine and we talk and they're super excited they're doing their europe tour and they're starting in maybe eastern europe it's cheaper and you know and they're struggling and it's like well yeah because the women here kind of have options uh money has gone up the countries have modernized a bit and you're no longer as exotic as you used to be but the dollar isn't as strong as it used to be like maybe in the 90s the difference between America and like something like Romania would be astronomical. I mean, people were just fighting.
fighting their way to get out. But nowadays, it's like, um, what do you bring besides money? Because when I came to Bucharest, I was shocked. I was thinking like third world communist shithole, probably modernized just a little bit. And maybe all the amenities America has were catching up. But then I was seeing like Lambos, Ferraris, BMWs, G-Wagons and like five star restaurants and fucking mansions everywhere. And I'm like, where are people getting all this fucking money? Jesus Christ. You know, so people can get shocked in parts of like Eastern Europe where the women won't be receptive to passerbys like they used to be because they're desperate to get out. But now more so like, are you here for good? And can I build a life with you? And then that's a completely different ballgame. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Latin America is the same. I think the biggest shock for Americans when they go overseas is the infrastructure difference is kind of shocking. Like even your bumfuck town in America has incredible roads. Electricity is always working. Water's flowing. There's no problems. 99% of the time utilities are working. You go to some of these other countries and especially the countryside that aren't developed and you go, Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's a shocker. It still shocks me even yeah, now. I just in that right there. I just traveled uh, to Sardinia, so I went with my girl on vacation there for her birthday. And besides the absolute world class beaches, like clearly Sardinia is not developed compared to the rest of Italy. And it felt like even the resort I stayed in—that's a five star resort. Like I was stepping back into nineteen like eighties Balkan Europe. You know, they got these weird old thirty year old looking toilets where the water tank is up above your head and. You're pulling with a string and shit. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, this is Italy, though. You know, (laughs) so, you know, the weirdest looking shit to that. I haven't seen since I was a kid. And that's a resort, man. So I could only imagine what the like, you know, the indigenous population, the natives are living like if that's your five star resort, you know, and it's just weird. Other other weird shit that you notice, like there will be buildings that they're built standing, but it's just cinder blocks cemented together, but they're completely empty. They're not finished buildings and they stay that way for years. Funding issues or corruption or they just built some shit without having a permit. Americans really don't understand how crazy it is that you can build an entire like hotel or a house or something on some land you don't have a permit for. And then it's just fully completed, been operational for like years. And then all of a sudden someone knocks on your door. There's on the, on the news. Someone's like, you didn't have a permit to build this. And it's like, but you shook the hand with the local politician and they're like, go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of it's kind of insane. The rules change dramatically when you go overseas. Um, corruption is more accessible. I've heard Andrew Tate say that. It's, a, it's very true. Uh, getting pulled over by the cops, offering them, you know, like 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, depending on how bad you were speeding. And you will get let off. You got to imagine these people's salaries, like $100 is, I wouldn't say life changing, but it's, it has a huge impact. And the way you deal with uh, the government in general, say you go out to Latin America and you open up a business or anywhere else, like these countries, like in the Balkans, and like you want to pay off the accountant to, you know, kind of give a call to this local guy on the council of whatever, and then he'll approve this permit here and nobody will ask questions. And that's just how shit works, you know, everywhere else in, you know, non-Western countries. It's unfortunate mm-hmm. in some ways, but like, damn, I'm not going to lie. You can get ahead. Here's an example of how you can get ahead. So in America, just to rent an apartment, everybody knows you get a background check, you get a credit check. They want three months of income or whatever, two years of income. It's got to be three times the rent, a whole bunch of stupid stipulations, right? Just a rent. Here in Romania, they asked for nothing, nothing. They just asked me for a deposit. If the place is a thousand a month, which I'm currently paying for right now, all they asked for was a month advance and that was it. Here's the keys, sign this contract for a year or month to month, whatever we agree on and that's it. And that's it. So I could, if I wanted to, outside of my budgetary like ability, rent something much nicer or, you know, even just cheaper. What if you do have a criminal conviction conviction or God knows what you come from another country and you don't have a uh, credit history built up like it sucks moving to America. You don't have credit history. Some landlords will just kind of, you know, shut you out and close the door right behind your ass. Like, no, thank you, dude. I don't know if you're just going to, you know, default on everything. And then I got to go through an expensive court proceeding just to kick you out. You know, over here, I don't think they have uh, the same rights for tenants. And uh, they just kick your ass out right away. Or they do it the old school way where they'll call a cousin, a friend, a brother, or some local bad guys, and they'll make sure your ass gets out of that apartment. You know, and things like in that sense, you could get more ahead. You know, um, getting approved for a house, also much easier. Getting a car approval, much easier. You know, they don't ask for so many years or they're so stringent. Did you Do you just have the money now? Because if you don't, we'll just repossess your shit anyway. You know, so it's very straightforward. I think in a way, bureaucracy in America for the average man is a detriment, like really 
really. It's hard yes. to plant your feet in America and really get ahead. I mean, you get eaten alive by taxes, by, you know, permits for this and like insurance for that. And God knows what else you need. When I started my business in America and I made my first hundred thousand, you know, from a job. And after I saw the proceeds net, so after taxes, after paying off the workers, the health insurance, you know, all the ghost policies, the material, all this shit, I went from having one hundred thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars and that thirty thousand dollars was split amongst me and my partner so really i ended up with just fifteen thousand dollars in my pocket and that's busting your ass day and night for a week dude like 12 hours every day and just seeing a hundred thousand dollar check which if i split half 50 50 you know what i mean like that's fifty thousand dollars that's incredible that's like life changing i came from a college student who was spending fifty dollars a month at one point eating nothing but peanut butter and jellies and not even the name brand ones, the store brand shit, the store brand peanut butters and the store brand bread that you could get the two pack with. And that's what I was surviving for months. And then I got start a job and I bust my ass and I see a bit of freedom. And now I'm like, oh shit, well, the government takes a heavy cut. Oh, well, you know, all these scams, like this health insurance I have to pay out and these policies for like workers comp and all the fees and the fines and the shit that no one tells you about in the beginning. And it's like, wow, dude, my profit, everything is being eaten alive. Like even if you're a business owner, a small business owner, it's like um, you make almost nothing, you know, yep. it's uh, that would that left a very sour taste in my mouth. So I went, you know, I started well, getting the idea like I need to get out of the US and what if I go back to Romania has it modern modernized enough and I I, I am a citizen there because I was born there so I acquired my second passport again shocked that the bureaucracy works this way I went and got everything done with my uncle who he paid some people off to just expedite the process and guess what my passport arrived the very next day after application done unheard of in America nice. my driver's license and all that shit was within three days my national identity card was like next day as well I literally it it took longer to schedule shit out and drive to the place than it did for them to just hand me my document. How insane is that? I would have waited a couple of weeks or months just to get my passport in America. And that's after going into a long ass line in A7 with the fucking robot calling you when it's your turn. And God knows how long that shit takes. I mean, just look at driver's licenses and renewing those at DMVs, man. It's a nightmare. No one even wants yeah. to go. Spend hours there. Hours. And by the way, I've seen what a government should run that runs properly like Dubai when I went to the UAE and set up businesses and stuff there. I was absolutely shocked at just how orderly and how efficient everything was. It felt like this was what America was supposed to be. Not just the cities with the skyscrapers and like ultra clean uh, highways, uh, sidewalks, boardwalks, everything. The bridges looked impeccable and the people were dressed nice. There's no ideologies and all this gender shit being pushed on you. And it's just so family oriented, which is shocking because you see Dubai as like a prostitute playground with millionaires and parts of it are. But when you walk around the normal city, like the marina and stuff, it's absolutely filled with families, dude. Children playing, yeah. um, women pushing their little uh, carts with their kids. Carriages. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it's beautiful. Everybody has like nannies and shit. Of course, there's a higher level of people there just based on wealth alone. But God, man, is it different day to day living and walking amongst them. And the people are happy because the government is almost, I want to say, frictionless in your day to day life. When you apply for stuff in Dubai or whatever, there's always an online component. You could do everything online, everything digitized. I mean, people may say this is an intrusion in privacy. And and I will give it to them. It is in a way, but they do when you apply to be a to, to get your investor visa, you go through a, a biometric scan, excuse me, and do medical tests. So they test you for AIDS and all this stuff. If you have that, you can't get in the country. Right. And then the biometric scan is because um, it's linked to basically everything you're ever going to do in the UAE. For example, if you drive and you're speeding, obviously your biometrics are stored with your car's license plate. They don't have to send you a picture of anything showing what you did in a period court the camera snaps the picture you are speeding here's the like email or whatever coming in the mail showing you that you were speeding you got caught by the speed trap and deduct the money out of your account automatically don't speed next time you know it's a bit, it's it's a bit authoritarian and like you know cyber really yeah yeah very yeah. like cyberpunk-esque like well it's a bit too overpowered 
as far as the government goes, but you're never going to have any problem with crime. No one's stabbing you there. No one's shooting you there. No one's stealing your shit there. I've left my laptop. I've left glasses that were expensive. My phone. I went and took a dip in the sea. I come back. No one even takes a peep at your stuff. No one would even dare. I mean, there are mm. rules for stealing in Dubai or just the UAE in general is your hand gets cut off. I mean, that seems barbaric to us. But if you steal anything from anybody, you will lose your hand. That's insane, dude. Nobody wants to steal. And there are guards, not just guards, but uh, security kind of all over the place. And they're active, always walking around either on the beaches, the boardwalks, sidewalks, wherever. There's security everywhere in the city. And if you're doing something as mundane as like filming, if you're filming some person too much, security will walk up to you and say, I need to see your phone and what you just recorded. So a lot of people that may be, you know, famous in some way or whatever, they just like to be private. If you go to Dubai, no one's ever going to put you on camera. They are not even allowed to film you. They'll confiscate your shit, throw you in jail. One thing you don't want to do in the UAE is mess with the locals or the cop, you know, just mind your business. But people don't understand that something like Dubai is 90% foreigners. It's rare to see an Emirati in Dubai, you know? Every once oh. in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a mostly a foreigner's playground, dude. It's like a, this amalgamation of the world. And you'll see rich people from Africa, from Asia, from like a, from all over the place, Europe, anything, Latin America. And it's everybody's combined kind of doing something. Obviously, there's a bunch of people that may be crooked and hiding money and investing in real estate. There was a massive boom in the market because of the Ukraine-Russia war and a ton of Ukrainians and Russians there that are wealthy. I mean, it's like the demographics kind of transformed. If you walk by a white person, it used to be mostly English or Australian that were there because they were huge in the finance and construction sectors. Now it's Russians or Ukrainians, guaranteed. And that's because they're escaping oh, okay. refugees from the war. Yeah. And then there's another boom of Indians, wealthy Indians that have moved there. And it's just the, the city is very resilient. And because they have zero taxes on a lot of industries, especially zero income tax for workers, uh, but zero tax for businesses, zero tax for capital gains, cryptos, all that shit. Um, it's just so... I don't know. It makes perfect sense to set up a business there. The only thing that screws you over is if you're an American, the IRS follows you everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Do you always have to report everything? You may not get taxed. There's an exemption when you're living permanently overseas, but you're getting taxed. Like they know they want to know how much you're making. You absolutely have to report yeah. everything. And it is the only country because everybody else, the reason the Brits and the Australians were moving there, uh, they were they're uh, not double taxation country. So you live in another place, you're you abide by their tax laws, which is zero percent. That's how Dubai was able to attract so many people. Imagine you're living in a country, man, that's a 40, 50 percent tax rate. And now you just move to a place that's just as developed, if not more and cleaner and better opportunities for your family, better health care, better academies for your kids, like everything in general. I went to the emergency room there because I got an ear infection. Three, I spent less than $300 to go to the emergency room. I saw a doctor, a nurse. They gave me uh, medications plus a checkup. Then they scheduled me to see a professional the very next day, a specialist, sorry, an ENT. I saw the specialist plus three other specialists and got four separate tests and more medication. Less than $300, completely uninsured. I didn't have insurance yet or didn't even have my identity card. I went there with a passport, you know, kind of like medical tourism. They asked me for my passport. I put down a little deposit just so they could make sure I had the money, which wasn't even that much. And I was shocked when it came out to less than 300 In America, I would have paid triple that just at the emergency room alone for the nurse to get my blood pressure. And it blew yes. me away, dude. Blew me away. The the Like, you can't see how broken America has become until you actually leave. And Americans back home are so propaganda is like unless you're privy to shit like this or you're somehow like adjacent mm. to it like family left and they'd say like they tell you their experiences or friends or something you really think we're in the greatest mm. country on earth like this is the freest place on earth nobody has opportunity like we do in america somewhat true if we're talking pure money but as far as like work-life balance as far as like benefits from work you know like maternity paternity leave health insurance all this shit it's just it's mind-numbing dude we're paying so much money for potholes and crime and drug addicts and all this crazy shit to just be multiplying all around us. My friend was in um, San Francisco for the, there's a three-year dental school. It's the only one in the entire nation. It's one of the top dental schools in the world. And he was paying 4,500 a month, I think it was. And there's just drug addicts, dude, injecting heroin, across, just the steps below him, 4,500 a month mm. in rent while you're going to dental school, already racking up hundreds of thousands of debt. Granted, it's dental school, but still you're paying 4,500 and you have three kids and the and they go out to school on the bus stop. There are heroin addicts injecting themselves, man. What in the world? And this is the, the greatest, mm -hmm. most powerful nation on earth. Like it seems like a, a like they're playing a joke on us. It's insane. Yeah, it really is. The degeneracy 
in America, I've not seen in Bucharest. I've not seen in other parts of Europe that I've been. I've lived in Croatia now with my girlfriend just for a month or so while she's prepping to come here. And I could tell Croatia, same story, dude, beautiful. The coast is absolutely gorgeous. A uh, small kind of town feel, extremely clean and safe. You could be out at all hours of the night. There's nothing, you know, negative that I could say. Uh, apart from what do you miss? I guess the amenities like, do you want Amazon next day delivery? Do you miss that? shit yeah are you a consumer if you if you're the consumerist type and you want that uh, instant now of uh, having everything available at your fingertips america's there's no better you know yeah yeah but is that life is that really living is that something you're proud of like congratulations you may have ordered a product on amazon and it comes in a day or so but uh you can't even go get a drink from starbucks because the coffee shit it'll poison you they're using crappy milk that's been processed to death that's like absolutely rancid then you can't even get a pizza you can't even eat bread you can't even the chicken is full of uh, sodium it's injected with a bunch of shit and oh this one's antibiotic free oh no this is organic oh no it's like you got to pay three times the price to get something half real you know you can't even go get fast food anymore dude a fucking mcchicken and shit there used to be a dollar menu thing now you're spending 20 bucks on yourself to go get a fucking number five or six at mcdonald's what kind of shit is that that those were sit down restaurant prices not too long ago it's insanity dude americans are being crushed like inflation people have no idea i was seeing the other day because I listened to these financial guys and they were saying if you actually go by 1980s uh, metrics, unemployment and uh, inflation are both upwards of 25% or more truly across the nation and they're saying we're at like six yeah. percent or three percent it's bullshit the way they count unemployment if they did the same way they counted it before it's 25 percent of americans and it and if we look around our lives our families it seems like 25 percent. it really does it really like that seems yeah and most of the jobs have turned into like a gig economy part-time work style bullshit temp work because companies don't want to pay out health insurance and all the benefits like why don't i hire two yeah. workers part-time i don't have to pay them shit i could fire one when times get slow and then rehire them when i I need them instead of the full-time person that you know will cost me a fortune man the economy sucks or outsource dude. for help too yeah outsource it sucks the economy is shit